Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and this is part five of making your own graphing utility or making your own grapher. I want to show you what we've done so far, so let's run the program. It's a little bit wider than your video screen, so I'll slide it over. We've got some information over here on how to type up the equation. The equation goes down here. Let's type in x minus 1, and if I hit enter or return, okay, then it will graph the equation. I want to show you. Let me quit closes, run again, hopefully it works here. Sometimes Python crashes, and so you just go with the flow on that. And I want to show you the limitation here. So if I do parentheses, 2 divided by 3 parentheses, times x, this should be a slope of 2 thirds on the x, but I'm going to go ahead and hit return and show you what happens here. And it gave me a zero line. You could see the graph of a zero line. And this is because Python rounds this number, actually truncates this number. So two-thirds would get truncated to zero. Zero times every input would be zero. So there is a limitation to the program that we have to be aware of. Um, the way you avoid that is to use the decimal point. If you really wanted to divide by that or have that kind of slope, either convert the value to a, fra to a decimal from a fraction, um, or use a 2.0 divided by 3. You only have to put the 0.0 on one of them. Let me show you that and give you a quick example. Hopefully this runs. And so here I'll type 2.0 divided by 3 and then multiply times x. And I won't even need parentheses. Order of operations will... will do this calculation first, then that part, and you can see I do get an up to over three graph. The way you have to do that is just be aware that you got to use a decimal to make sure it does not truncate numbers. All right, today, or on part, let's see, five, no, six, excuse me, this is part six, I got that wrong. Um, today on part six, we're going to add in all the math, co uh, math functions like cosine, sine, absolute value, square roots, and things like that. So let's scroll down. I'm going to do a couple of things right off the bat up top. So where I've imported Pygame, I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to import um, math. And just like I've done before uh, down here with the from Pygame import everything, I'm going to do the same thing. This is a crucial piece so that I don't have to put math dot um, and use the library. In this case, for making the equation, it makes it look cleaner. It looks nicer. Excuse me, I was talking instead of thinking about what I was typing. I apologize. From math, import everything. That's that line right there. So we've added the import math and from, pat, from math, import asterisk or everything. So now scroll down. Let's scroll down. We're going to add some information first, very much like this is. In fact, I'd like to make some changes here. I'd like to make some, some changes on this one. Select Enter when done. I'm going to leave that and then cut that off right there. And I'm going to take this part of the equation, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that, and I'm going to add another line here. So let's copy this line and paste. And let's see, space it out just a little bit. This will say select backspace, backspace to clear, to clear, or, um, and I'm going to use Q to start over. All right, hopefully that fits. Um, if this doesn't fit, in fact, actually, we'll do enter when done, or we'll move this up here. Maybe I'll have a little bit more room. So I'm just making sure I have enough room so that when this is displayed, yeah, I think I like that better up there. I think it'll fit better. So we'll say select enter, select enter. It's usually capital E to clean that up a little bit. Select enter when done or Q to start over and we'll put in the commands for both of these. We already put in the command for enter. So we'll put in the command for Q and then also the command for backspace to clear, which uh, will make it easy. Um, there's a way to actually make it 
take away or remove elements from an array, we're simply going to clear the array on Backspace just to make it simple. While I'm here, I want to, well, let's go ahead and put those two things in. So those commands we can put in, let's see, down here at the enter. So right here at the return, which is the enter command, I'm going to add in another command here called Backspace. And you type in all caps backspace so that when the event key is the backspace, we are going to take the equation. We're going to take the equation, that's the array, and simply clear it out by reestablishing it at an empty array. It's the easiest way. And this way it'll reset and you can be able to type in something else if you make a mistake before hitting return. And then we also would wanted a way to restart and put the Q, make Q restart it all over again. And that'll be important down the road, which would be slightly different from backspace. So we'll put that up here with the X, or actually I'll just paste it in because it's in memory here. <clears throat> and in this case, when the K is the Q, or the key is the Q, what we're going to do is just have it rerun the whole program again. So we're going to recall up the whole my main program upon Q, and that'll start that up again. Let's come back up to put in the information about the math commands. So up here where we have instructions, oh, I just noticed something. We'll have an overlap of instructions here. Say 70 to 100. Let's make this 130 for a consistent way of spacing out. There's really no reason for this to be in. I'm going to make this one also width plus 10. That way it'll have enough room, hopefully, to display it. So let's see if these things work before we go any further. I'm going to run the module. Hopefully it doesn't crash. I've been having some crash errors. And let's see. We have uh, everything on the screen displayed nicely. If I type in something wrong, like I forget to put in the multiplication symbol and I hit backspace, it does clear it. I can still hit an equation and graph it. I think we're doing okay. So let's close the program. And let's add in all the instructions for the math commands, and then we'll add in the math commands, and we'll be done with this part. So I'm going to put in a new font, a new font, a smaller font, so I can fit this in. And I'm going to use this font also for labeling the x and y axis down the road. So what I'm going to do is put in a new font, come up here to font, and where fonts 1 and 2 are, and put in font 3, and same idea, pygame.font.assystemfont, parentheses, and I'm going to do an Arial font here, so Arial font, and a size 14, that should work out nicely for both the labeling of the X and Y axis down the road, as well as to fit in all these instructions about um, uh, the math function, basically your math function guide for typing in math functions. So that's the what we're going to put right here, and this is also how you're going to quickly learn what all the math functions are. So let's see, let's start off with uh, some of the basics. I'm going to use S, and that one's going to be sign, and I'll just put sign parentheses open and close to indicate it's the sign. I'm not going to separate with a comma. Yeah, let's separate with a comma here. Let's do C for cosine. Remember, this is just a guide, so I'm just labeling this information for myself later in case I come back to this later. T, we'll do tan. Let's do R for square root. R for square root. So SQ, SQRT is the math library command for square root. And I don't have to put math dot here. Normally I would if I didn't import everything from the math library. So that's nifty that that was done. A for absolute value. ABS, parentheses open, close is what this will do. And let's see. Um, oh, logarithm. So I'm going to do L for the base 10 logarithm. L for base 10 logarithm. So that's equals to the math library, log 10, parentheses, parentheses. The natural logarithm, I'm going to use n for the natural logarithm. And that is um, log, just a regular log, parentheses, parentheses. That's a natural logarithm. 
And then I'm going to want to put the E number and the pi number for convenience. So I'll simply say E is equal to E and P is equal to PI. And these are both E and PI are available or uh, understood in the math library. Okay, that's stretched out a little bit. Let me see if I can get a little more room on the screen so you can see most of it now. All right, hopefully this fits with this aerial size 14. And that reminds me, I need to make it aerial size 14. So let me come back and make sure that that is done. So I'm not going to use the regular font here. I'm going to use font, let's see, font um, 3. Font 3 on that one when we render it. And then I'm going to display it. Looks like I have spaced it out another 30 pixels already. So let's see if that works. Run. And you can see that mine did fit barely in. So I think I got everything in there for my little information. This is also helpful to let you know how to punch in all the equations. And so let's get to work on that part. Let's close the program here. Come back to where we do the keyboard commands. Keyboard commands. And what I'm going to do is take one of the else if here for the keyboard commands. I'm going to copy it. Come down and paste it. And let's put in a little comment too. These are the math function commands. And let's start off with, uh, see if I can remember which ones we did. We did sign, that was S. And what we're going to do is we're going to append um, S I N open parentheses. We're going to let the user close the parentheses on their own. Okay, so this is what we're going to need to do for all of them. I'm going to pause the video. There's no reason for you to hear me do it twice, basically. So as you can see, I'm taking one of them, I'm copying it a bunch and pasting it a bunch of times, and I'll start making the changes. Okay, I've put in all mine. You should double check that you have yours the same. So, and I'm doing the same S is sine, C is cosine, T is tan, R square root, A, A, B, S, L log 10, N log E, E, P, P, I. Okay, that looks good. Looks like we should have in all of our math equations. Let's try running it and test some things here. Okay, so let's put in a nice little cosine wave. A little cosine wave. Notice I close the parentheses myself. So you know, and there's the graph. Um, I'm going to close it and try another one here. Let's see. Yep. And I thought I was going to get this. So Python has been crashing on me and we, you might be getting the same errors. Let me see if I can figure out why. Okay. I'm going to add in a command, an import that I sometimes don't add in, sometimes do. And I, I have a feeling it's an important one for a reason that I do not understand. And it's importing the system. So I'm going to import SYS. Hopefully this makes it uh, crash less. We'll find out soon. I'm going to just try out another wave real quick. Let's try tangent. And the reason I want to show you tangent is because of the asymptote issue. As you can see, the asymptotes are solid lines here. These solid straight lines are not part of the graph. This is the fact that we connected a line from point to point working backwards here. So something to understand about the way we graphed it, and also you may understand about how a TI-83 probably graphs it too. Looking at this is very similar to the TI-83's setup. There probably is a way given time uh, for you to figure out how not to graph these. And uh, that's something to look into. Let me close this and run it again real quick. One more thing I want to check. I want to show you another graph that, yep, well, the system didn't work because I just got the cancel again, but I'm just going to double click and open it up. Sorry about that. I'm not an expert at Python. I hope uh, that doesn't disappoint you. I'm just trying to share as much as I can to get you started in the programming world. So let me show you 1 divided by x. 1 divided by x. And this also should have asymptotes. In fact, we'll add a little bit. Let's add 1 to shift it up 1. And notice it doesn't draw the asymptote here. So it draws the asymptote on some occasions and not on others. And I've yet to figure out exactly wh why it does that, but um, I don't think that's uh, going to stop you from making a really nice graphing utility of your own. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I really hope you're enjoying this. We're going to go on to um, actually a really neat thing of adding a second graph 
and putting in uh, data points and having it calculate and graph data points. Uh, thank you for watching.